Since the Sandbox fans, we're a week away from the start of NFL officially, so you know the bold predictions, the power rankings, our stat leaders, and award predictions are all coming to you guys this week. Fantasy drafts are going on. The weekly fantasy rankings are about to start. It's great. It's time, dude. It's, it's great. Time. We waited I'm too always long. like, this is the weird thing where it's like, dude, I can't believe summer's over, but football's Football, here. So yeah. it's like, what? <laughs> am I disappointed or am I really yeah, fucking so I'm like, excited? Well, like, I'm excited, but then it'll get to like later in the season and it'll be dark by you know, five. It'll, yeah, yeah. it'll be like Tuesday through Tuesday, Wednesday. I'll be like, dude, this winter Horrible, sucks. And then it'll yeah. go to Thursday. I'm like, football's here. We're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But we're going to start with the power ranking. So you guys know quarterly through the season, every four weeks, we'll give you guys an updated list. 10 to 1 might have some... Uh, Special live podcast for the bold predictions sprinkling, you know, through the the first half at least of the season. Um, so excited to plan that out and invite you guys in to hear how that all gets broken down and see this live because I would say out of all the episodes that we do, this is this is one of the better ones I know, that we do like, I know. as far as a repeat goes. But I just have a ten to one list. I didn't want to waste any time on talking about teams that weren't inside the top ten here. Um, but please, Tuan, let, let us know the, the teams you have just outside. Yeah, I want to talk about three teams that are kind of big. Na- two teams are – one team's a big name. Two teams are fringe top ten. Um, the fringe, Seahawks and Colts, guys that just missed. Okay. Um, another team that just missed, big name, but I've mentioned this throughout the offseason, and I'm going to say consistent. Whether you like it or not, my mind's not changing because you comment something shitty. The Philadelphia Eagles, I don't have in the top ten. I just – I think it's going to be a tough year for the Eagles with the way the last season ended. And I get it. They get Saquon. They get some acquisitions. Show me before. Like, you got to show me before. Because when you go from losing a Super Bowl to then what last year was... It just spells disaster for me. I'm just just shocked with you saying that. And and this is all an assumption because I don't know, like, you're 10-1 to right now. But I'm assuming that you still have Dallas above Philly. And I feel like you don't have... I think Dallas suck. When I say sub-500 this year. Wow. Okay, because I was going to say, I feel like Philly's roster is drastically better than Dallas's. But that's what I said, the whole NFC East, I think that they're going to be a couple games apart of each other, but I think that one team has to make it. I don't think anyone else is going to make it. I think it's going to be ugly. Yeah. Kind of like the NFC South was when the Bucks made it the four seed at like eight and nine. Yeah. That's what I think the NFC East looks like this I year. I think we'll talk about the NFC East a little bit more in the bold predictions. Mm, but, but, interesting. <laughs> so the Washington we'll Commanders win the Super Bowl for Steve. Nice. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> oh, you want to kick us off with 10 then? Yeah, I'll go. I'm going to go um, 10 through 6. Okay. And and okay. you can pick us up from there. Actually, let's go 10 at a time. Ten, okay. one, one and one and one. one. All right. Okay, at 10. This is where I have the Dallas Cowboys. Okay. Definitely couldn't have them any higher on the list, but I do just think having Dak and CD there offensively, healthy Trayvon Diggs. I know Deron Bland's going to be out for mm-hmm. some time, but Micah Parsons back. I don't want to say that that's enough for me for them to be a top team, but to be recognized in the top 10 going into the season before we see anything else, yeah. Do I think that the Cowboys could have controlled some of their offseason a little bit better so, you know, the anticipation of the team wasn't where it is right now because I don't think Dallas Cowboys fans are as excited going into the year. I think there's questions about McCarthy. There's still contract questions looming about Dak who can't be franchise tagged. And Mike is who's coming up. That's what I'm saying. And, and they're not going to not pay Micah. Well, and then it's just like, okay, well, by the time you get those two deals done, you're probably going to have to rework that entire offensive line, yep. too. And then it's like, oh, Trayvon Diggs comes around, and it's... And a team that doesn't know how to stop the run anyway, and when the yeah. groundwork is laid out for how to beat you, and it's just running the football, dude, teams are going to run downhill on them a lot, and they're going to control the clock. It's going to put Dak in a position where he's forced to do things. Mike for McCarthy's sure. going to get jumpy with the play calling. They're going to get into situations where they're turning the ball over and losing games, and it's going to look ugly. That's yeah. just how I see it with them. That and I also strongly strongly hate Jerry Jones's comments, Dude, bro. What is good with him? This guy can, he will let me put it this way, he's 99 and he's a <laughs> geriatric old man at this point. Like yeah. he can't you're looking at a dude whose marbles are going. Yeah. And, like, he wants to be involved so bad because he just wants to see them win one more time. If you want he that. He wants his dude, name attached to he it. He wants it. He wants everyone to go, Jerry Jones is the greatest. Well, let me tell you something. Jerry Jones is not the greatest. He'll never be the greatest. 
What's it been? Twenty over twenty thirty years over now. Over twenty years since they've sniffed playoff yeah. success, like yeah. sniffed it. But not even playoff success. But Jerry's talking about oh, like I built this, we built this, like we established all this. What? What did you do, dude? He's like the old man that like tells everyone all the things he did when he was young because he needs like the affirmation from somebody saying yeah, yeah. you were the goat. Yeah, you were just fucking awesome. You can have Jerry's world. You can have the Dallas Cowboys. I understand where they're being valued as like a franchise, and that's definitely something to boast about. But at the same time, you haven't built a winning organization. So like, he's more focused about ladies coming on his bus than he is yeah. like you ain't kidding <laughs> oh my you god you literally ain't kidding drives me nuts i'll kick it off with 10 uh i know you probably don't have them in the list but i thought i do feel strongly about them especially with being in what i think is one of the more weak divisions in the league maybe not the weakest because i just talked about the nfc east the atlanta falcons okay so i have the falcons here at 10 nothing egregious nothing higher than that might have had them a little bit higher in the i might have had them at like eight or seven in uh the original power rankings we did but Still think Atlanta can be a dangerous team. I think they have a really good-looking offense, and when you put Kirk at the helm, I think it looks better. Even if Kirk doesn't work out at the helm, they have a backup plan in Penix, which I think still could work out. That um, shouldn't be a conversation for this it, year. It shouldn't be a conversation for this year, but if there is a situation where the Achilles does fail Kirk, it's like you have a guy that can go in that I think can be successful when he goes yeah. in. Also, a defensive-minded head coach with a defense that got much better last year and is continuing to get better. I think it's only going to look good for the Atlanta Falcons. Now, Tampa Bay is a pretty difficult team to play. I think they will continue to be difficult. But other than that, I think the Saints are a cakewalk, and I think the Panthers are still a cakewalk. Yeah. Now, no. I do think the Panthers are starting to make the right moves to go in the right direction, but they failed Doesn't themselves help. so bad two years ago that yeah. it's like it's not going to just happen like that. Yeah. You lose Burns, Saints Jonathan like Brooks on the IR already. Yeah. You're back to Chubba Hubbard and Miles Sanders. Yeah. And like my whole thing is, is that's really what like you want to go into the year with. Like it's you had a whole off season already, and I just I just don't think much changed about that roster. They fucking paid Miles Sanders like they're stuck to him now. Yeah. Like they are stuck where it's yeah. a situation where Jonathan Brooks goes down. Well, what are you going to sign another guy? Well, we did give this guy what fifty million dollars across five years or something like that. Yeah, like something crazy, something ugly. No, so I know. I got Falcons here. I think it's their division, and I think they just have one of the easier divisions. So I did want to put them in here. Too. I don't have the Falcons on here. I debated it, but I also just feel like they're like as much as as I want to give them that NFC self. Like I feel like they're in like that Pittsburgh Steelers territory and. Every single year, I feel like we anticipate the Steelers to be a top 10 team. And the past couple of years, they just really haven't lived up to that. And I think it, I want to say it's a little different for Atlanta because I just think it's a lot of newer pieces. Um, and I think that like continuity might just take some time to get established. But the offensive line's well, the best back, one of the best backs in football. So, like, that obviously helps. But my questions with that come more in specifically to. Drake ones in in the defensive side of the ball. So I just kind of want you to elaborate on that a little bit. With Drake London pretty much being like the sole receiving option there. You know, Bijan can catch passes, Pitts can catch passes, but outside of that, like I don't think you have 700 yard expectations for Darnell Mooney. I, I don't, don't. Think so either. Um, if it works out, great. But like I'm yeah. not going in the season relying on him. That, I'm yeah. thinking Pitts and Bijan are both probably going to catch similar. Or Pitts will catch more yards than him. I think. Yeah. I think Bijan will be right around that 700 number for receiving yards, which is great for a running. It's really good for a running for sure. back, especially considering I think they do bell cow him a little bit. So give me a touchdown in uh, total yardage number for Drake London. I'm gonna go for Drake London right around 1300 yards. That's a lot. Uh, I do, yeah, and I do have those expectations. I think he's very skilled and he's a big dude too. People sleep on how like he's he's a big guy. He can go up and get it. Um, Caught two touchdowns last yep. year. And I think? like his I like his route running ability. Last year was two touchdowns. This year it's got to go up. Um, if the Falcons are going to be what I think they are, I think that Drake London needs eight minimum. Eight minimum. I think I think Oof. we're looking at a thirteen hundred yards. What's eight the ceiling? Season ceiling could be as high as like twelve. Twelve touchdowns yeah. in fifteen hundred yards. Yeah. yeah, I'd say that's a that's a ceiling. Now, realistically, I don't think he's going to get there. Now, I know we're talking about only two hundred more yards, but. Those 200 your, more difference. yards matter. It's like yeah. 
that's the difference between Tyree Kill catching 1,800 and 2,000. Like, that is a difference. For sure. No, absolutely. And defensive expectations. They did add some personnel. You know, Jesse Bates was already there last mm-hmm. year. You talk about Grady Jarrett, one of the best interior defenders in the entire league. Top now five you, corner, A.J. Terrell. Like. And they just locked him up. Now you added Judon and a Justin Simmons. Do you think that that's going to take some time to come together? Even with that personnel, I don't think that that's going to be a a top 10 defensive unit in the league this year. Do I think that it helps that they have some talent there? Yeah, like absolutely. They needed talent. Um, But I just do think like they're a little bit away from being a top three team in the NFC. We shit on them for not taking the defensive player in the draft, right? Not taking that edge rusher that we thought they needed so damn bad. The What was it, Jared Verse maybe? Or it was... um who went to Minnesota? Latu, La- Dallas Turner. Dallas Turner. We were thinking, like, I think that's the pick that we wanted was Turner. Um, but they went out and they got Judon, like, really, really good pass rusher, who, again, was hurt last year. But you made a trade. You got a pass rusher. It's only going to help your defense. I think it only helps. And I think Judon's in a position where I think he can be successful right off the jump there. I really think he can just go in when they need a pass rush play, and then as he continues to learn the offense more and more, he'll get more and more reps. But Judon's a guy that can make an impact the, step, the second he steps on the field. You think, so. you think Judon started the year as a three-down player for them? I'm not saying that he shouldn't be. I think he's a three-down talent player, but I yeah. just don't think they'll do it because I think they have guys that they're trying to – or they already have working in there. They got them a little late in the offseason. So, yeah. again, I just think that they want to put themselves in the best position to be successful, and I think they're okay knowing that we don't have to rush things like this. I think that their team can hang without Judon, let yeah. alone now you have a guy like that. For sure. No, I, I, Is Tommy G and Prosciutto pop upset that their boy had to go somewhere else? Chad's going to Atlanta week three. Is he really? I think at first Kansas City. Yeah, yeah. That's with that's Judon. Sweet. Yeah. That's fucking sweet. Well, now now he's they're saying like, well, well, we gotta we gotta refine you know a, a Patriots plug to like go. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Judon, right. Judon really hooked it up for them. He was a good dude, but they're excited. That's awesome. Um, they wanted him to get paid, obviously, but um, didn't happen. And I think it's even better that like that connection will still be strong, like Agreed. in Atlanta. You know, um, at nine. I, I can't wait to hear where you have them, and I hope it's different than the first time around. But this is where I have the New York Jets. Oh, it's different. You're not going to like it. Oh, I, I, I had <laughs> a feeling about like that. It. But, hey, when I'm right, I'm going to do the – like, I'm going to be like Dana White talking about John Jones. I'm going to glaze the fucking New York Jets. And, and, and <laughs> as people that talk about it, you literally always rash on Dana White and say how fucking – I'm an know, idiot. Know, he is, I so I can't wait to do that. To I you. know, but this is the thing. Dana's wrong, but <laughs> yeah. that's for that's for the Sandbox <laughs> MMA channel. We can talk about that on Sandbox MMA. But, but with with the Jets, though, I think they have the personnel. They addressed what they needed to. It was just kind of like, hey, like last year happened, and that was beyond like control. But what's gonna go down this year? Like, I'm intrigued enough to put them in this list. I love Breeze this year. I love Gary Wilson. Gary Wilson might lead the NFL in touchdowns this year. He might. He, he might. might. He honest. My my spoiling. I didn't. Anything? No, no, no. I didn't. Okay. I didn't. But um, I was thinking. I remember thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> um. I think. I think at the end of the day, it comes down to Aaron Rodgers. Like, is Rodgers actually going to be that guy? Because we we know that he won MVPs late in his career. But that last year in Green Bay and obviously having last year, we're talking about, like, realistically two years of football that we haven't seen, you know, the best of A-Rod. And I think he has the surrounding pieces, the defense, and they invest in the offensive line to do so. But it's the same thing with the Chicago Bears, right? Like, all of that has to come together and work and fit. And that's just a part that's the wait and see. So talent-wise, potential-wise... They deserve to be on this list. The Jets do, but not higher than nine on my list. We'll get to that. I'm not going to start talking about it. Because I know, it's just, top five I can't, you, so, so it's all good. We'll go, we'll go with this uh, number nine team. Steve, you name dropped them a little bit. Ant, cover your ears. Pittsburgh Steelers at number nine, dude. Wow. I, got, I think, dude, I think Pitt's going to be sneak a lot of people. Do you? I think they're going to win games that you're like, how the hell do they win that game? And I honestly think that there's going to be a little bit of difficulty in the start of the year. Not with necessarily losing games, but it might not look pretty. I think that Justin Fields may find his way into that quarterback Did spot what said? and change it all around. No, I didn't. He said the Falcons better be ready because we have a Justin Fields package. Like, he legit said that. 
Like, so we're going to see Justin Fields week one. But he obviously wasn't, you know, announced the starter. And here's the thing I want to say with Pittsburgh. I actually think defensively they improved. I think so, too, but and that's the other part. That's that's the scary part. But doesn't help that two of their starting offensive linemen are down right now. I know, I know. And that's like going to be the story of the Pittsburgh Steelers every yeah, fucking year. It's it their is. offensive line sucks balls. Yeah. But at the end of the day... I think I, I've been talking about it. Now she's about to be on his Derrick Henry arc right now, where it may not be you know we'll two thousand rushing yards, but like this is where Derrick Henry had his first seriously good year. I think he's going to be good. You're even banking if, on him. I really think he's going to be good. And even if not, Jalen Warren has proven to be a factor in that offense. You have a guy. I also think Roman Wilson solid. The kid that they drafted, think he'll come into his own as the season yeah, continues to progress. He comes off IR. Uh, yeah, yep. he's banged up. Yep. So. I think he'll come into his own. They got picking still, and they got um. Well, that's my whole thing. Like, I'm I'm worried about the the receiving options. Like, I know I know what Pickens can be, and I actually am a firm believer in Roman Wilson when he is healthy. Mm-hmm. I'm actually interested to see if this is the year we see some Darnell Washington because like Maybe. dude's a freak. Like six seven can run fast. We've obviously heard the Frymuth conversations, but that was a guy I was considering as we were talking about the Musgrave conversation. Yep. I'm like. Do I go wild and just do some crazy shit like this, dude? He is a solid tight end, but we've seen it's been hit and miss with Pat Fryermuth at times. But you know he's a he's a northerner up here, right? Yeah, we, yeah. we like we like our boy up here, right? Um, but I think that defense is going to keep them in games a lot, and I think eventually if Justin Fields takes over that room. If they have that special Taysom Hill, Justin Fields kind of package, I think that can seriously mess with teams and. Fields can run you over, not like Taysom Hill can, but he runs so much faster and he is so much shiftier than Taysom Hill. I'm so interested like, to see if like that's what the package is though, to like hand him the ball or if it's like, hey, like he's gonna come in and like we're gonna do some crazy shit and still like pass the ball. Because mm-hmm. I just don't want it to be like predictable. You right, know what I'm saying? Right, like right. that's my whole thing with it. But um, I can see plays with him and like George Pickens on like I can see three what, plus trick plays this year, like, seventy five yard touchdowns where Pickens is wide open because the defense had no fucking idea what was going on. They should do like a double reverse bootleg and just send your fat Calvin mm-hmm. Austin, send him down the field. Yep, and just feel toss just it. Him. Oh, yeah. that'll be fucking yeah. awesome, dude. <laughs> so and honestly, that happens, if you, you want, want, send Fields out to the right. Send him out like you can, not in the slot, but like send him out wide. Yeah. And have, see if he can make a play out wide, because I bet he could. If he I threw know. a screen pass to him, I bet he could catch it and take it somewhere. Or catch it and pass it. Yep. Like, you know what I mean? If he's behind the line of scrimmage. So, like, those are all things that, like, I feel like you kind of have to consider there. Yeah. Eight. I know you're going to hate this spot, too. This is where I have the Houston Texans. You talk about the Colts, like, outside. Look, I know. <laughs> you, you, you talk about the Colts just outside the top yeah. ten, though. But they're, they're talented enough to win that division. I feel like there's a lot of expectations and pressure on Houston. And I'm not saying that they're not good enough to live up to it. Because they absolutely are. But, like, they, the playoff success last year was a big part of the hype in the offseason. And... They beat the Browns, and then who'd they lose to? Competitive game with the Ravens. Yeah, competitive. Yeah, that's what I mean. And I don't know. I'm just. I need not. I don't. I don't need to see more from C.J. Stroud, Nico Collins, Tank Dell, and Stephon Diggs are all proven. Joe Mixon is proven. Coming together, staying healthy. The next step for them is like beating the fucking Chiefs. Like go go and beat like a team like that. Mm-hmm. Right. Take care of your division and handle your business. I know that. Their defense is expected to be improved upon. You got Petrie healthy. You got Stingley healthy. You add Danielle Hunter, you know, with Jason to, you know, their first round pick and Will Anderson, who they absolutely love. Um, so all the potential is there. I just can't give them a top five spot, dethroning some of these teams that are up here that still, you know, have contending rosters. And the Texans do too, but they just need to. They need to take those steps, just like I said with the Lions last year. I'm not. I'm doing the same type of treatment to these teams that are about to either overcome the edge or need to like show that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's 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 not that the Lions weren't good enough last year. It's okay. You you took your steps. You proved it. Now what are you gonna do? Now I feel like the the Lions are a top two team to beat in the NFC. I just don't feel that the the Texans are that threat yet. Mm -hmm. I think they started to make themselves recognize. Now prove you're that threat. Mm -hmm. Here at eight. That's a good it's a good pick. I have them obviously higher, but again, I can see where Jets and Texans in the top five for you. So let's see who starts to shake out. We'll see, we'll see where it is. But (laughs) at eight. I got the Rams here at eight. Okay. Now 
we're talking about the top 10. These are all going to be very, very good teams. So eight doesn't mean you're a bad team. But the Rams are going to have some tough games this season. When you look at their schedule, it's not an easy schedule by chance. You're playing the Seahawks twice, who I think are going to be a very competitive team. I think the Cardinals are going to be a much more competitive team this year. And and I think that those Niners games are actually a lot more winnable for the Ravens and or the Rams than they were in the past. But you got Stafford, who has played great, but again, it's another year, and we see injuries continue to plague him at times throughout the season. For sure. Um, got their Puka backup options like one. Wentz, so like I don't love that. Yeah. You got Kyron Williams, who's a stud, but Sean McVay comes up with a report today saying he might kick return. Yeah, I, I hold on. We talked about this at lunch today. Okay. If I'm a fantasy owner and I hear that, I shitting I, my I don't I don't want to say you're slamming that panic button. Yeah. but I'm shook because I'm like, okay, like if they feel like they need to splash him in there, you know what? That also was kind of telling me that Corum is going to have a role here. Yeah, dude, Corum's going to have a legit. Corum's going to get touchdowns. Yeah, yeah, I think, and that's what like it seriously scares me. Um, you dra- I'm, you I'm drafted a, Kyron. No. No. And I've wanted him so... But, like, I was not in a position where I wasn't taking him at number two overall. Like, he didn't fall all the way back to me at the end of the second round. Taking a Derrick Henry and a Pacheco over him, I think. I think I took took JJ over him. Uh, Yeah, I I have the ninth pick, and I had JJ there. I was going to take Jonathan Taylor if he fell, but he went a pick before me. I took Jonathan Taylor. So, that's why I would have loved JT. I think he's going to be one of the more premier backs, but you'll see when we get there. Okay. Um, Okay. So, I got Rams here at eight. Again, you mentioned Puka, too. Um, Cooper Cup, one more year, tread on the tires. I still think he's a stud. I actually think Cooper Cup's the receiver to have in that offense. But what for sh- where he's being drafted? Yes. For, but what's shaking me a lot? Why are they making an Ernest an Ernest Jones trade right now? Like just shipped him off to the Tennessee Titans. I don't like. I understand there's like contracts and stuff that they need to deal with there. Like. Not only did you lose Aaron Donald, but you just lost your second best defensive player on the entire team. Maybe Jared Verse is that good. That's what people are really saying. Like he he didn't play in the entire preseason, mm-hmm. but they just like one's a pass rusher and one's a middle linebacker. Right. Like yeah, that's the uh, yeah. I still feel like somebody needs to be like in command of like that defense and it's not like the unit years ago when they competing for a Super Bowl that like they have the veteran presence of like an Eric Weddle, like and and, and guys like that. So or Jalen Ramsey. So I feel a little bit weary about that. I know they're dealing with a lot of injuries on the offensive line. Not a team I have in my top ten, but definitely a team that would have been in that twelve thirteen range for that conversation. Colts would have been there too. Maybe it's like one of those things also with the Rams where they just randomly have a guy on their team that steps up each year that you have no idea who he is in the preseason, yeah. and then all of a sudden the season comes along, oh, and you're like, holy shit. fuck, yeah. Puka Nakua or Kyron Williams, both guys last year. And then yeah. you you just you kind of see it with these guys year in and year out with the Rams. and Sean McVay's like that. He really he, is. He really is like that. Um, seven, Green Bay Packers. We talked about you know their depth, their versatility, what this team can do, how they can beat you. You guys going to hear our award leader stat predictions, and I have a couple other things I wanted to sneak in there with you. I actually think that the conversation with Green Bay this year is going to be how good their defense is. I think their defense is going to be superb. I think it's going to be a top seven unit in the NFL if they stay healthy. We know Jair, Rashawn Gary came into his own. Um, uh, Kenny Clark up front is, is right. very, very good. And they have like a lot of different playmakers Dude, on that just unit. just signed your boy Xavier McKinney too. Dude, I'm like. so excited to see him there. Um, and I think like this is really making this team, you know, well-rounded and you know i know the first conversation is like oh well you put the packers like above the texans that mean you think love over stroud like no not like i i think like they're just about like the same i think i i give an edge because matt lafleur and that's not to rash on D'Amico ryan's or like say anything bad about him at all I just don't think Matt LaFleur is getting the love or the recognition that, like, he deserves. Like, this dude came into a troublesome Green Bay team and completely hushed out all the noise, made all the right decisions. They now have, like, seven playmakers on offense, and us fantasy managers are like, well, shit, who is the guy? Like, Dude, they're not even dumping picks to get, yeah. like, these players. They're just making the right pick at the right time, developing them the correct way, and putting them in a position to succeed. To see, it's like, yeah. It is the perfect way to build a championship organization. It's good to see. Yeah, and, and now it, you have Marshawn Lloyd, who people are raving about as yeah. a rookie running back. 
Josh Jacobs, who I'm hoping like this weekend I have another couple of drafts that I can I can get. Um, so we'll really see you know how that all works out. But you got a couple of fu's because you were talking about Marshawn Lloyd, and everyone's like, I was gonna draft him, and then Steve oh, really? puts him on yeah, public yeah, file. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. all right. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Well, <laughs> nah, yeah. Well, what am I, this is my job. What am I supposed to do? I was yeah, gonna yeah. say, stop letting all the sleepers go. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I was just thinking of a couple of them today, like Jalen Wright. Like I know Miami has so many backs in there, like. Like an explosive offense, but he can be really good. And look, I, I snagged Trey Benson, like, and I, I think Slug. like he he might honestly end up being like the dude. Um, but I think it's Ray Davis from Buffalo, the yep. uh, rookie running rookie, back, yeah. also hearing great things about him. Um, and not to be a homer, but uh, Tracy for the Giants, I also been hearing you know great things. And they only kept three backs, him, Singletary, and Gray. So um, I feel like that's kind of like telling us something, like a little bit. But we're we'll talking about the Packers. I feel good about them. Seven is a very respectable spot. I think this team could finish the year as the top team in the NFC. But gotta show that they're better than the Lions first. Sure. We got some we got some differences. I'm loving it. We'll seven. See. We'll see. We'll see if we're loving it. The Buffalo Bills at seven. Okay. So I'm happy you have them in there. They're in there. Um, as time has continued to progress, and it's weird because I said it and then I went back on it and then I said it. It's just I just think the addition by subtraction is really there with Stefan Diggs. Um, I think you got Keon Coleman, a young, talented, hungry receiver. And I think when you have Josh Allen in full command of the offense, he's the vet there now. He's the full decision maker. No one else it's is in team. their ears. It's his team, right? I think that gives him so much more of an opportunity to shine. And I think Buffalo saw where they were having a lot of success last year was when they finally said, let's just run the damn ball. Yeah. And I think they're going to be able to build on a lot of that success. I know I had them 9-8 and eight in our schedule predictions. I think that's wrong already. Um, you think they're be better than I think that. they're going to be a 10-win team this year. I do think that they're going to be solved. The defense, I actually do think the defense has been a little bit overrated. But I actually think I the think offense so, yeah. is going to be even better this year. I think it's going to be a very solid. I game. actually, I don't, I don't know like what it is this year with the Buffalo Bills, but I actually feel like, like you said, it's addition by subtraction. I think that this team is going to be a much more. How do I want to say this? I just think they're going to be like much better as a unit. Like I still think they're disciplined, yeah. right? Like, yeah, discipline for sure. I think balance. I think I kind of want to say too. Like we know James Cook's going to burst out to the scene. I think if, if they win 10 games this year and still fall short of, like, their goals, like, Sean McDermott's got to go. Like, mm-hmm. I don't care how many games, like, he wins a season. I don't care who you put the blame on. Josh Allen's a top quarterback in the NFL. 100%. You gave him top down. You invested in a top pass rusher in Vaughn Miller, and that was a failed experiment. You had a defense that just aged out pretty much. You know what I mean? Matt Milano. Don't have expectations for him like any longer, like with all the injury things going on. Like he had like a great career, and I'm not writing him off, but it's just like some of the things that he has to overcome and all of the responsibility that he's really had in that time um, was just kind of like tough to see like the way it worked out. But they have a, a younger core there, and um, they're hoping to build around that. But at six for me, right? You said um, Buffalo, Buffalo at seven. seven. Yeah, yeah. Six for me, the Philly Eagles. Um, I just think like this is this is the most talented roster in football. Like it's loaded. Yeah, like offensively, defensively, no matter how you slice it, no matter what I try and say like a, about Philly, like this is a really good team. And, and I had this conversation in the office today too because I just had Jonathan Taylor. I drafted at nine and picked him, and then got Etienne on the way back around. But just the draft I have on Saturday is a 12-person league, but it's also my big league. So I don't want to have two of the same like first-round guys that I'm relying on both of these teams because if they if one of them goes down, then there goes two of my teams and my two biggest leagues. So I want you to give me some comfort about potentially drafting Saquon Barkley. And I know that usually I'm the one doing this. But He's going to be very... I think his usage rate's going to be high. I think you're going to see a lot of plays where Jalen Hurts is going to dump it off to him. So if you have PPR, I think he's going to be a very, very talented player. And I also think they're like, dude, we've seen Jalen Hurts get injured and like play through all these injuries. How many times is it going to be an injury where he can't play through? Let's try and keep him more healthy. It takes so much of a load off of Jalen Hurts where they're going to say, we'd rather run Saquon a lot than run Jalen Hurts a lot. You're losing the tush push, so you're not going to get the random one-yard touchdowns. You're going to get, you might get a couple from Jalen Hurts, but they're going to be much more inclined to run the football on the goal line than they are to just tush push it. Like, I I feel good about Saquon because I think he fits there in Philly. 
Sadly. pass game and run game, I think his usage rate's going to increase. Not Do Giants you? level usage okay, rate, okay, like, okay, okay. but I think his usage rate compared to any other running back that the that, Eagles have had okay. in the past 10 years, 100%. I, okay, I agree with that because I was going to say it's going to be really tough for him to touch the ball more than he did in the Giants because he, he was like... he was it. Like, yeah. he was it. So, so the, the conversation I had today was obviously that I, I don't want to draft Jonathan Taylor and I just feel like if I draft a wide receiver there, I'm going to be screwed when it comes to round three, round four, especially where you know how I feel comfortable with sure. my teams. And the way this league goes, it's two running back, two wide receiver, two flex. So, like, realistically, if I have four running backs that I want to play... I could play all four of them. Yeah. Um, so that makes me feel like a little bit better about, I don't want to say like reaching because he can go. Um, what I just, pick is it? it uh, nine. It's, it's actually seven. Seven in a 12 person league. And you like, you don't want Taylor? I just don't want to draft him twice. I just drafted him in my league. And How many I, leagues you got? A lot. That's what me too. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, I stack up in my leagues because I'm like, well, this guy, if he completely sucks, I'm screwed. If he's good, yeah. I'm good everywhere. So. Well, but my whole thing is, is like, these are my two big leagues. So when it's like, like the family league that we do and stuff like that, like when it comes to that, yeah, I have no problem with like doing stacks or like just mm-hmm. taking shots and picking like at the top of the draft. Right now, I don't want to because I'd rather have like that back end um, on the first round, the first picks of round two rather than waiting all the way till the end um, on that. But my thought process is, Saquon and Derrick Henry back mm-hmm. to back there. It's going to be tough because I have a feeling Jamar Chase is going to drop with the whole holdout. Um, if Tyreek Hill or CD Lamb ever got to me, that would really make it an extremely difficult posi- uh, position. <laughs> if Jamar Chase holds out and I took him two, now granted it's a keeper league, so CD was gone, CMC was gone. If I took him two overall, and he right, Brees Hall was yeah. gone. At least it's only the Pats that he misses week one, though. He's expected to play, though. That's what Zach Taylor said. They all said he's expected to play. Showed up 13 minutes late today to How practice and street How the fuck is he going to have his homie, like, Joe Burrow's his homie. How is he going to be like, yeah, I'm not coming to show up? Yeah. Joe will get him to play. No, nah, well, yeah, we'll, we'll see He'll how it like, works. He'll be like, dude, so. I'll give you an extra, like, $2 million in my contract. Come on, show <laughs> my, my whole thing with Saquon, though, is even if he touches the ball four or five less times a game this year, he might have better boom potential on all of those handoffs because this is going to be the best offensive line he's played behind in his entire career. Tenfold, too. Yes. Like, it's not close. No, it's not. <laughs> and and, and that's, that's my only thing. Also, um, I had a tough time sleeping last night. Just... I, I hate sleeping with the AC on now, like, since I've been sleeping with, like, the windows open and shit, and I was watching the ESPN analysts, like, do their mock drafts and stuff, and Stefania Bell, I don't know if, if you're familiar or if you guys are familiar, she's usually the one that gives the injury rundown, and she went Saquon first, and she talked about, like, hey, like, he might have had, like, some slip-ups, but he's played 10-plus games in a lot of these seasons. I just want someone that's going to be a running back that's going to be there, and that's behind a good offensive people line. People always say that. Like, yes, yeah, Saquon has had injury problems, but people always say that because they're, like, talk about him like he, they draft him first overall. Yeah. He gets injured, and that's all they can think about is he was hurt for a couple weeks. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I know. Like, there are seasons that he's out for a long time. Yeah. But he's also, people forget he's been in the league for like six, seven years now. It's like, you're going to have those seasons. One what about CMC? Backs, he's not yeah. at the top of your list anymore. Why? No. Because he played a full fucking season. Yeah. Absolutely. Don't worry. It's going to be all right. Yeah. Like fucking sitting behind Eric Flowers anymore. <laughs> like, you're going to be fine. <laughs> wow. That was horrible, man. <laughs> so bad. Oof, we came a long way. I'm going to kick it to six. And uh, is this going to air before or after Ant's wedding? Before. Before. Well, good, because I'm going to be able to give him a wedding <laughs> gift uh, to cheer him up because at six is the Ravens. Now, this isn't a gag. I, I just... Ravens had their chance last year. I think they kind of missed their specific year opportunity. Now, they could impress. They're still a super talented team. And when you have super talented teams, all you need is a run to get to the Super Bowl. But I just think that there are three AFC teams that are better than them. And um, I'm going to put them here at six. I'm weary that Derrick Henry could seriously upgrade that offense, and I really do think he will. Again, we talked about it. He's not running for 1,800 yards. He's not running for 1,600 yards. He's not running for 1,500 yards. I think he'll run for 1,100. I think he'll get a couple touchdowns. I'm also worried with with Baltimore. Baltimore's my five, so I'm just going to go into it and, and just add to it. You can't you can't predict injuries, but why do I feel like every single time the Ravens get a veteran that's like, oh my god, this dude's a perfect fit? Someone gets hurt, and I'm not I'm not relying on that. I just told you guys like I I think I'm gonna end up drafting him on, on my way back around like on Saturday when I have my draft. But something's just like, hey, is this too good to be true? Is it? So 
that's the only pot that scares me. But I have Baltimore at five. They've lost some defensive players, um, and, and that's a part that that makes me feel a little bit weird. But I actually feel like the defense will improve, and I feel like Kyle Hamilton might honestly be one of the better defensive players in all of football I like totally this upcoming agree. year. Totally agree. I think they need better defensive back play, like corners and, and, and things like that. So especially because they lost, they lost another defensive back in Geno Stone, Stone and yes. they lost. Uh, didn't they lose a corner? They they might have honestly. Maybe it was just like. Someone retired or something. Yeah, I but what. but um, I that's that's what I'm worried about. But I just need that offense to stay afloat. Like I need them to just be able to hold their own. I think if they score 20 points a week as an offense, that they'll be they'll be fine as a team. Yep, their defense will do much better. Yeah. So, I've, again, their defense isn't their weak suit. Like again, the secondary play could be a little increased in terms of man to man coverage. But like Kyle Hamilton, you get the best safety in the league. Maybe Antoine Winfield, but like well, Minka. You get, yeah, you get. You get a stud. Top five. A young, still like 24 year old stud who yeah. hits hard, too. No, so. absolutely. Steve, I'll go into five and I'll just take my licks just because you guys want to fucking shit me and like shit on me Jeez. in the comments. Here we doesn't go. mean it's going to change how I feel. Now, this isn't a fucking hate parade. Like, I'm over it. I'm <laughs> sick of fucking being tired and hating him. I like Pat Mahomes. I think he's a super talented player. I think Taylor Swift is a fucking industry plant. I think Travis Kelsey's a loser. But at the end of the day, the Chiefs are a damn good football team. They're a top five football team. I have them here at five. I do think their offense actually, like, going back and forth thinking about this, if it's gotten worse, it's gotten better. While I do think Kelsey's not going to be as good, Rasheed Rice is playing, so it's not like they lose that wide receiver. I think Xavier Worthy is the perfect fit for Kansas City. Hollywood went down, but when he comes back, he is going to fit in that yeah, offense. Yeah. And they'll find someone else to play well, too. They're going to hand the ball to Pacheco a lot more. Pacheco runs angry. He's going to be playing for a contract coming up, uh, and he's going to want to get that contract. I think Kansas City is going to look at the way Pacheco's played, realize that they've paid him so little and he's been so successful and pivotal to helping them give that they the will bag. pay him. Yeah. They won't give him 10 mil, but they'll work something Eight, out with him. Patrick is, Mahomes maybe. will work something out separately yeah. with him. Like yeah. I'm sure you you ever think that some of these guys like they buy their they buy their offensive lineman watches and shit like that. You ever think they look at him they go, "Dude, like I know they're only going to give you like 7 8 mil a year, but like I don't think they hand him cash. Deal. You don't think? I don't think they hand him cash. You don't think they like sugar daddy him a little bit though? Where they're like, nope. "You want it? You want that car? I got you." But but I do think that Patrick Mahomes is the type of player that would take it amongst himself to be like, "Hey, like I know you're dealing with like this contract shit. I can try and recommend like that they give me a signing bonus mm-hmm. to like knock some off and and help pay you." And I actually also don't think like his priority is going to be resetting like the quarterback market I think with so the too. way like his deal has been. And that's not to say, like, hey, he's going to take the Brady approach to just kind of be in, like, that conversation. I just think, like, he's done so much at this point in his career, and he's probably made more money off the field than he has on. And we already know he's made 500 million. I don't think it's about the money for him. I think it is fully legacy, and he's just scratching that. Mm-hmm. Which is which is the scary part, and that's just kind of what infuriates me. Like when when like we have like these conversations, and it's just like, hey, I I know that like, and the, I'm not even like giving the the Chiefs all their recognition and taking any thing away from the Patriots. Like the Patriots had their time, and I recognize them like as such. And like I know it sucks that it just so happens to be like another AFC team who was always on like a competitive like playing field with the Patriots. Um, but I just I, I like seeing like history. Like obviously I wasn't a Patriots fan, but I have a Brady jersey. I recognize he's the greatest. You know what I mean? Dude, you so. know what I don't like though? You're right. You recognize he's there, but I don't like all the fucking Twitter warriors that don't recognize that Brady's the greatest and they're already calling Pat Mahomes the but greatest. But who at this they're point already yeah. calling Travis Kelsey better than Gronk? If you think Travis Kelsey is a better tight end than Rob Gronkowski, you don't deserve to watch football. I think it's you're dumb. And you don't know what you're talking about. I think it's more of a conversation than Brady and Mahomes right now, though, just because of the availability that he had over his career. Where does Kelsey come close to Gronk? Like, route running? I I mean, he's had more receiving yards, I'd say, in in most seasons than Gronk. But, like, Gronk does more every time he steps on the field. More touchdowns. More touchdowns. And he drags the entire defense with him to get to the end No, yeah, he does. He blocks ten times better. He isn't a fucking locker room cancer. Like, I feel like Travis Kelsey slowly, uh, I don't think he's... I think, slowly... I don't think so at all. I mean, he's the one get. I didn't see Gronk get up in Belichick's face and push him over. Dude, stop it. Will you <laughs> stop anyway, it? Anyway. They, they didn't even go in the same room as fucking Belichick because they weren't speaking to him. Like, no. Oh, my God. Stop. <laughs> they loved Belichick. I don't want to hear that bogus. That bo- They loved Belichick. Brady and Belichick may have disagreed on some things, but they love each other. Gronk loves Belichick, loves Belichick except for the little fucking Lions thing. That I, I the, the, whole, the whole thing, like, 
I don't even know how we got to Gronk and fucking Travis Kelsey. <laughs> we, com- we compared <laughs> yeah. the past of the Chiefs' but, greatness. But I, I do feel like Brady's still, like, the greatest, and Mahomes still has stuff to prove before, like, yeah. that can get there. But I definitely, di- 100%, I mean, I don't think either of them are the greatest. I still think it's Tony Gonzalez at the tight end position. That's just me. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> even it. Tony Gonzalez is better than Travis Kelsey. But what, I, what I'm saying is, is, like, your infuriation over, like, I think Kelsey is, is a much more respectable conversation than Brady and Mahomes. I absolutely do. Maybe. <coughs> maybe. Regardless. Chiefs at five. I got five. Chiefs at five. I still think they're a very good team. We're talking about the top five in the NFL. I yeah, just think it, I think, like they're, I think every single point. team has won. And I said this again. Every single team has one game circled, and it's the Kansas City Chiefs. It's just, yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. They're going to throw everything they have at the Chiefs. They got a new play to bring out. They want to bring out the Justin Fields package that no one's seen before. They'll do it against the Chiefs. Like, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. So, and I also think their defense is fine. But I don't think it's as good as it was last year, if I'm being honest. So yeah. that's just my logic for having them at five. Say what you want in the comments. I'll read it. I'll get mad. And <laughs> we'll do this whole thing again in the next power rankings in week four. Four, <laughs> four is where I have the Buffalo Bills. think they're balanced. Um, we talked about this a little bit when you shared you know, their, their positioning. I think it, it's MVP season or bust for Josh Allen this year. And... You know, there's no excuses. Like, yeah, the Jets are in town, and, and they can win some games. Miami can win some games. But regardless, like, they, they should at least be a wild card team. Um, I don't want to double elaborate too much on them, so I have mm-hmm. the Buffalo Bills here at four. And I don't feel too confident about my three, but I'm sure you guys can, you know, kind of insinuate who that is, and we can talk about it after. Well, we may have the same three if the way you're talking about it. But four, I got uh, Green Bay. Okay, I think Green Bay's unbelievable organization. I think that you're absolutely right. Matt Lafleur needs to get more of his flowers. I think they found a way to just put pieces everywhere on that offense that work and win them football games, and that's what the Green Bay Packers are going to do. Yeah. They're going to win football games with Jordan Love at the helm. So made a lot of noise and surprised a lot of people in the playoffs last year. Yep. They were two minutes away from went from going to the. Like, but you know we kept I mean? saying that too. We're yeah. like, dude. The Packers are going to cover. Yeah. The Packers are going to cover. Yeah. The Packers, and it just you just ride the Packers all the way. They will trying take to you win you some money, guys. That's all it is. Just trying listen, to win guys. you some money. Just listen. Three San Francisco. Okay, they're not in my rankings. Oh, oh, what? <laughs> not in your rankings. You have the I Atlanta so. Falcons in okay. here, but you don't have the 49ers. 49ers. We still don't know what's happening with Ayuk, dude. Or Trent, I think, or Trent Williams. Or Trent, I think Ayuk is about to lay on this thing. Yeah, I think he's about to, and I think I think he's got his agent in his ear saying. Things that he, and Aiden shouldn't be saying. Yeah, like I think he, I should see the football field. I think he should show that San Francisco. Hey, like I'll play for you, but you gotta like either pay me or like help me help you. Yeah, because if he goes out there and he tries to like big dick him the whole time, dude, it's not gonna work out. It never works when you try and big dick the organization. The organization will always win. Yeah, I like I. We were talking about this today too. Like I know it's tough with the the forty nine ers contract scenarios. Like obviously, like Purdy has to like get paid and things like that. Um, and they have to be very specific and strategic about who, like, they sign. And I don't blame them for not wanting to, you know, like, I know Trent Williams is a Hall of Fame left tackle, but I, I wouldn't want to give a dude 35 years old $35 million I know, either. I know. Like, you like, got one more year out of him, maybe. Yeah, like, yeah. maybe. So, look, like, if he don't, if he don't want to play, then, like, he's going to be risking more by not playing this year than by them paying him, what, $25 million? Like, So I I understand, like, all these guys are trying to do what they can to absolutely, you know, lock up some dollars and take care of their future. And I watched um, George Kittle on on Pat McAfee the other day, and, and, you know, they asked about, like, all the drama and what's going on. And he he had a perfect answer. It's like, it's it's not drama. It's we want our guys to go out there and get paid and and do their due diligence, like, as they should. And when they get come back in or if they move, like – They'll get recognized as such, but, like, we want what's best for, like, them. And, you know, it's not causing any tear or tension in the locker room. He was like, the left tackle, whoever it is for the 49ers right now, he would have had no playing experience with them. But as a tight end, getting that backup experience, especially if Trent doesn't play, he gets that time to actually be a little bit more comfortable with him. And that could potentially be a guy that either plays on the right side later on in the season or might be a swing tackle or actually might play valuable minutes on the left side if Trent decides to hold out significantly. So those are all, you know, important things. But I just think, you know, their roster is too good not to have 
have them in here. I absolutely have been vocal about them taking steps back. But while we're going into the season, none of that's been proven and they're still healthy. There's nothing that I can take away from them at this point. So as much as I want to say that, I, I mean, I probably wouldn't even call them not a top 10 team. Do I think that they're three right now? Like, no, probably not. But I just haven't seen a team that has surpassed the 49ers to the point where I could say, or maybe I did. And, and we'll get to that in the NFC. So I'm just going to leave it at that. So at three, I get the Lions, which means, and, and I'm assuming that's going to be two, I have two. the Lions. Yeah, so Lions, I mean, they're studs. I'm glad they made you a believer last year. I had been a believer because, I mean, I love my underdog story. You know the deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But they got the, dude, they got a sick roster. Sick roster, great coach. And, like, even if Dan Campbell isn't the best X's and O's coach, he makes them wake up and want to go play football. And that's one of the most valuable things you can have at the coaching position. Yeah. He gets them fired up. He will go out. He, they will die for Dan Campbell, and Dan Campbell will die for them. That's just the type of culture they have, and it's like, that's a scary team to go play because they'll yeah. go out and they'll just beat you up. And if even if you beat them, they'll circle that game next year and they're going to beat you bad the next time. For sure. And I actually feel, like, really confident, like, about their defense this year. And, like, three years ago, if you told me, like, I feel confident about the Detroit Lions defense, like, would have been a lot Bottom of two in the league. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> I, absolutely. Um, but I was actually shocked. Like, in, this, in the second to last round of my fantasy draft on Saturday, they were still available. And, like, I, I thought that that was, like, a come-up, honestly. Like, I think that they improved their personnel. I think Hutch is going to take major steps this year. The mm -hmm. secondary improved drastically. Um, I'm excited about this defense, and I honestly don't care about, you know, the week one matchup versus the Rams. Like, a week one defense is, like, whatever, but do I think that they're going to have 35, 40 points up against them? No, I absolutely don't. I think, like, what they're going to try and focus on significantly through the year is, like, point differential. And um, I think that they're going to have to be great at that, knowing that, like, at least in the beginning parts of the year, the NFC um, is going to be really competitive, and with me saying Detroit at two, that obviously means I have Kansas City at one. Sure, um, I I'm going to save it for the bowl predictions. I I'm, <laughs> I'm going to save it for the bowl predictions, um, but. I mean, the expectation is still that the Chiefs are going to be on top of that division, on top of the AFC, sure. as long as, you know, Mahomes is healthy with Andy Reid. Even if Travis Kelsey wasn't fully healthy there, I still feel confident that they would still be able to, you know, continue on and still win, win 10 still. football games. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And I like the Raiders and I like the Chargers' direction. Do I think that they can win more games than the Chiefs this year? No, I don't. I don't think so either. Yeah. I think it can be close. Yeah. I, I just... Chargers, no. But, you know, we'll get to, again, bold predictions with the Raiders. I've been saying it all year. Um, Chiefs are a fucking good football team, and it is what it is. I hate it, but it is what it is. Two, Jets, one, Texans. Literally, like, as you're going through it and you're starting to say, I'm going, I know what's coming at the end of this. But, dude, I'm sticking Bro, to my guns here. Those are, those are top positions. It's time for the Jets. It is time for the Jets. And I think the Texans have the best roster in the NFL. I truly do. Do you? Better than Philly. I think so. Wow. I think there are some pieces on defense that Philly has better, but, like, dude, I realistically think Will Anderson can be the best pass rusher out of both of those two teams. Oh, absolutely. I think that Stingley is, honestly, like, he might play better than Slay this year. Not oh, Now, he's not overall better than Slay all time, obviously. But just like, look at the rooms. Like, the Eagles' cornerback room is better, is better than the Texans' cornerback room. They just have a lot of depth, dude. They do have they do have a lot of depth, and I know you got your Cooper DeGene coming in, who I know I'm a big fan of. But um, at safety, I don't really trust anyone in the safety position for C oh, C it CJ. Yeah, but like he's going back and forth between the Lions. And I think him and Petre like, are on par. I think I I like Petre a lot, so maybe it's just me loving Petre on par, that much. Like, I, I give I give the the Philly defense the edge in the cornerback room. I would give the Texans the edge in the pass rusher. Linebacker is just like a wash because I don't feel like either one of them have like you like Sirianni coaching the defense more than you like uh, no, D'Amico Ryan. No, up. not at all. So that's why I like yeah. D'Amico Ryan's a lot too, and I think that's going to play a major factor. And I think that's the Texans. But Ryan's is a he's a defensive dude. Guy, in Sirianni. He's an offensive dude, 100%. so I just, I just feel like like you also like put that in mind. Like I I like yeah, Bobby Slowick looked fucking great for Houston last right. year, and like that the way that all worked out. Um, Which QB you like better? Probably Stroud to win a football game. I think I like Stroud more. Probably Stroud, but even even how deep the Texans wide receiver room is, I think I still give it to the Eagles with Jahan Dotson. Yeah. Maybe yeah, uh, but I just think. 
Actually, they're both kind of like you got Diggs and AJ Brown who both can just ruin the room. Well, my my whole thing is I actually think I'm taking AJ Brown and Devonta Smith over the rest of the guys over in the Nico? Texans. Yeah. Oh, I'm, dude, I think Nico and CJ have are gonna have one of those things this year where you're like, oh my god. No, they could. I'm just I, if I had to rank those receivers like at this moment right now, I think like it would go AJ, Devonta, Nico, probably Dell, Diggs, and then Diggs. Yeah, yeah, and then Dotson. I think I got AJ, Nico, Devonta, Diggs, or sorry, Dell, Diggs, Dotson. Wow, we we both feel pretty shitty about Diggs. <laughs> I know, I know. Not that I feel shitty about him, but no. I don't think he's gonna go to a new offense and that has already catches. clicked. Yeah, yeah, like, and if he does do that, I think CJ Stroud is based. Yeah, and I think he'll sack up and say, "Stefan, shut the fuck up. This is my team, and if you don't want to be on it, we can cut you." I was listening to Move the Sticks this morning. And they were talking about this. My favorite podcast. Besides, since the sandbox, of course. Of course, of course. Um, and you know what? They, when they were discussing this, if if that conversation comes up, they said, "You see, Jay Stroud has to go all over to Diggs, and he has to say, you know what? Uh, you know what my favorite receiver is? The open one. And you just throw it to him. And, and like that's that's what it should be if you're yep. trying to win. Um, but I think that's an interesting conversation. Like I think if you want to slice down the offensive line a little bit individually, like yeah, I'd say like maybe Laramie Tunsil is you know the the best tackle on both teams, but I'd say the unit on Philly is like I would agree. Better. Interior offensive line is definitely better on Yeah, Philly. and then you just give like the the offensive coaching like not a little bit to like the Eagles. So like yeah. I mean pretty on par on opposite sides of like the ball and, and stuff like that too, but um a pretty good comparison, but it wouldn't be that equal for the Jets for me, even with how how star started their defense is. I do think that the Jets have the better defense out of those three teams. Um I also think, like, dude, the X factor is like, will Rodgers play well? If he does, dude, the Jets are just... Rodgers is three on the QB list out of all those three for me. I I put Hurts above Rodgers right now. Coming off an injury and not seeing anything? Yeah, but I can get that. Like, that's totally fine. I... But I think once Aaron Rodgers steps on that field, he's healthy. He's still fucking Aaron Rodgers. Now, he may Rogers. not be 28-year-old Aaron Rodgers, but he's still Aaron Rodgers. He still sees the field better than those two quarterbacks do. Taking he him does. over Trevor Lawrence, taking him yep. over Kirk Cousins, not taking him over Kyler. Not taking him over Kyler. Not not as a better quarterback or fantasy quarterback. Are you talking? Wait, are you talking yes fantasy or no fantasy? I, f- for that conversation about the quarterbacks, like with Kirk Cousins and Trevor Lawrence, I right. was talking fantasy-wise. You were talking fantasy-wise. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't. <laughs> so now um, yeah, we'll get I mean, back on that. I, yeah, I mean, Ky- talking about like a, an organizational standpoint, like yeah, like I have my concerns about Kyler Murray's leadership and things like that. Mm-hmm. But I also just know like you're more guaranteed to get three years of great play from Kyler Murray than you are from Aaron Rodgers. Well, I, I totally agree with that. I think that Rodgers has this year and he might have next year, and then he might call it quits. Or if he wins it all this year, I think he's done. Yeah, which I'm okay with. Let him ride into the sunset. But I really do think, dude, the Jets are due. Yeah, they are. Yeah, And with the way that people talked about it last year, it almost made sense that it wasn't going to work out. With the way that people are kind of doubting it this year, it almost makes sense to me that it's going to work out. So I do think it's going to work out. I think you can see Garrett Wilson be a top five receiver in the entire league this year in terms of yardage, maybe in terms of touchdowns like you talked about. I think you can see Brees Hall be a top three running back in Would the league. Would you draft Garrett Wilson in fantasy drafts over A.J. Brown? Yeah, for sure. Interesting. I t- that was my thing, man. I, th- no, I don't no, think no, no, I no. think AJ Brown's gonna have a little. Again, he's not gonna go sub a thousand yards, but he's not catching for sixteen hundred. Like for he's sure. not doing it. For Garrett sure. Wilson might catch for fifteen, sixteen hundred. We'll see. Since the sandbox fans, these were the STSB power rankings, preseason power rankings. The next time you guys hear these will be after week four. We'll see how crazy Twan's list looks. Maybe his Miley stats looking a little crazy. I'm we'll a see what happens. That's yeah. the thing. I look into the future. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll see what future that is. Maybe that's a multiverse future, like whatever the case is. Um, but no, really excited. Football's finally here, man. The wait is over. Um, thank you guys for following along in the off season, and we're gonna help you guys win your leagues and be here all season for you guys. If you guys have any questions about putting together your roster, fantasy questions, make sure you hit the text the show link in our episode description. It sends us a direct message. Right to my phone. It's not my phone number. I'm sorry. Um, But we'll answer those questions live on air, discuss and debate. And I'm sure that there's a lot of other people that are going to have those conversations too. So hit up Sandbox MMA. Hit up Since the Sandbox. You guys know the deal. Peace. Love. Five stars. Nothing less.